Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So let's solve the second problem of this week. Example two. This problem is also related to a simply simple scheme. But this beam is connected to a combination of loads. The examples that we have from this till this point, uh, in every example, beam was connected to uh, one load, either a point load or a DDL or a VDL. But now we will solve some problems yeah, that will have a combination of loads. So this beam is connected to a point load. At mid span having a magnitude of 15 kilometer and it has a DDL. The intensity of DDL is 5 kilometer meter. Kilometer per meter. And it has a point moment acting at support A. So this is another uh, new concept that we will learn in this problem, that how to deal with a uh, truck roller or hinge support in our circuit system. The magnitude is 80 kilometers meter. This point is A, this point is B, and this point is C. Uh, the objective of this problem is again to draw a shear force diagram. Of this beam. So this beam will have two reactions as well as a simply supported beam and there is no horizontal load acting. We can call this reaction as RA and this reaction as RC. These distances are 5 meter and Okay, uh, so the first step to solve the problem is to uh, establish the relations of the simply supported beam. For that, we will apply conditions of equilibrium. Let's apply sigma at y equal to 0, and our convention will be we take upward forces as positive. So if we start from this side, Ra is the force acting in the upward direction. Uh, we are applying sigma at y equal to 0, so this moment will not be included in this equation. Uh, next, if we go right in the right hand direction, we have 15 kilometers here acting in the downward direction, so minus 15 acting in the downward direction, and then this UDL, we know that the magnitude of UDL can be determined by calculating the area of this rectangle made by this UDL, so 5 into 5. And it's acting in the downward direction, so we get 5 into 5, and then we have RC acting in the upward direction, so plus RC, and this sum is equal to 0. Now, if we rearrange this equation, what do we get? We get RA plus RC equal to 1. And in this equation, we have two unknowns, RA and RC, so we cannot solve this equation. Another relationship between these unknowns. So for that, we will apply the other condition of equilibrium. Let's take sigma and c equal to zero. And for this equation, our convention will be we will take clockwise moment as positive. Now let's start from this side. So R A will produce moment in clockwise direction and also moment c. So our equation will be R A into N, N is a diagram, and then this moment is acting around point A. This moment is in clockwise direction, so it can be simply positive, plus 80 kilometer meter. Uh, and I have to the moment by itself, so we do not need to multiply it with any other arm. Uh, now let's move to this direction, and then we find that it's 15 kilometer. 
ายอย่างเป็นจุดสายอย่างเป็นจุดเป็นจุดไปจุดนี้ไหมตัวเสือใช่ไหมที่เพิ่งมันรู้รู้ไม่ได้บอกว่าไม่ใช่เห็นมันประกอบไปสักจุดเนี่ยเป็นจุดไปเป็นความมั่นใจเลยนะนี่เวลาเราไปไปที่เองพาสักจุดไปจุดไปที่มาได้ไปที่ and this will be The <coughs> solve this equation, you get the value of an a from this equation, and that value will be 5.75. Are you able to find 5.75? Yes. 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 And if we plug in this value of r a in equation number one, we will get the value of r two, and r two from this equation will come out to be. 34.25. In order, so this way we have calculated the reaction of this beam R A and R C. Now the next step is to see that uh, how to divide this beam into number of portions. So for that we'll start from the left side, and we see that at point A we have a point A reaction is there and a point B is there. As you know in We have a point known X. So it means that this point B should be a dividing uh, point between this and the second portion. So our function will be first portion should be A B because we have a variation in number at point B. So then from point B uh, we have the UDL. UDL is coming at point B. Now we will consider these portions one by one, and from both portions we will write down the equations for shear force and force. So let's start solving these portions one by one. Portion A first. How much is the limit of x for portion A? Portion A x with a value from zero to five. Our first step is to draw the free body diagram for portion AB. For portion AB, we will consider a section somewhere over here. And let's draw the free body diagram for portion AB. We have a hinge port here. This is the location of the section. We have an injection here, which is an issue that is known. This distance is x, and we have a point in the middle whose dimension is 18 kilometers meter. Is there uh, any other force present in this region, in this portion? I think we have section. Uh, the forces that are exposed by the section. Here, two sections: the downward direction B and the exposed moment. And this is our convention to draw the shear force in the downward direction and the moment in the counterclockwise direction. Now we will write down the equations for shear force and moment moment. For shear force, we will apply sigma Fy equal to zero, and our convention will be to take a force in this as positive. So how many uh, vertical forces are there in y direction, starting from this end and A? We have this force 5.75 kilometers acting in our direction. If it's positive 5.75 kilometers, this moment will not appear in this equation because it's going to be positive. And then we have this shear force V acting in our direction. So minus V this is equal to zero. And if we rearrange this equation, we get V equal to 5.75 kilometers. So 
this is the equation of here for power portion uh, a m. And there's no variable in this equation, so with that the value of here for is constant for the entire portion a m. Now let's try down the equation for the minimum sigma m x equal to zero, and our convention will be changing it from one to the other. So if we write down the equation of movement from this portion, we start from this side, point A, and we can sum of movement about the section or about this portion. Here, uh, 5.75 kilonewton, so we can sum of the movement about this point, A, 5.75, and remember our is x. Movement is in top by starting the point, and we have solid here. And then we have this 80 kilonewton meter movement. This movement is also acting in top by direction, so it will be taken as common here, 80 kilometers per meter. And as we are again the same uh, movement, so it does not need to be multiplied with any given up. Then we move in this direction. Here, force V is already passing through the section, so it will not reach any movement above the section. And then we have movement XM acting in counterclockwise direction, so minus M equal to 0. So this is the equation of the uh, equation of bending movement for this portion. Now if I rearrange this equation, I will get m is equal to 5.75x plus 80. And in this equation we have variable x, which means that the value of bending movement is not constant throughout the uh, portion A. So we will have to calculate the value of m for point A. And a x is equal to zero, so m is equal to five point seven five into zero plus eighty, and this means that m at point a is equal to eighty kilonewton meter. Now this time we have a different equation uh, as compared to the problem that we. We have a hinge support at point A, but still we have some value of bending moment, and this value is equal to 80 kilonewton meter in this case. Why this is so? Because we have a point moment at A at point A. So I told this uh, to you guys uh, earlier as well that at hinge support and ruler support and free end of a cantilever wheel, the value of bending moment is equal to zero. Unless there is an external load right here. So, this thing we have seen in this part that we have uh, external hinge support, but the value of bending moment is not equal to zero at this angle B, rather, it is equal to an externally applied moment, which is 80 kilonewton meter at angle B. So, that's something new that we have learned in this, uh, in this example. So, this is the value of bending moment at the point A. to 5 meter. So M will be equal to 5.75 into 5 plus 8. And this is the value of M equal to 108.75 kilometer meter. So this is the value of M for point B. You can use the sub as well, if you like, for these values. So, this completes our calculation for portion A. Now, let's move to portion B. In portion BC, we will have to draw the three body diagram first. We will consider section somewhere over here. And this section, uh, somebody asked me for uh, one of the problems that we solved earlier related to UDL that why we took the location of section before the resultant of UDL, why not after the UDL, uh, the resultant. So the answer is that we can consider section anywhere uh, before the resultant or after the resultant does not matter because this resultant is just uh, sort of an imaginary uh, force acting here. I mean, by imaginary, I mean 
uh, when we will make calculation for shear force and bending moment, we will determine the original UDL which is present on the left side of the signal. Uh, this location of the resultant is just used for the bending moment calculation. Uh, so you can consider section here or section outside uh, after the resultant. It does not matter. When we will be calculating the bending moment for portion uh, BC, you will consider whatever part of UDF is present on the left side of the signal. Okay, let's see how. <clears throat> the value of X for portion BC will vary from 5 to 20 seconds. And let's draw the body diagram for portion BC. Here is the port A. This is our section. 15 kilonewton point known is in here, and we will. This is the port A. Okay, this is uh, support A, and we have a reaction here. The magnitude of reaction is already known. How much is that? It is 5.75 kilonewton. 7.5. And we have part of the UDL present there. How much is the intensity of the UDL? This is 5 kilometers per meter. And we have a point of movement actually here, which is 80 kilometers meter. What else? Is there any other force present? In portion BC, the exposed shear force B and exposed bending moment M. And this point is point B. The location of the section with respect to support A is X. So I think this completes the free body diagram for portion BC. Now let's write down the equation for shear force and bending moment. For shear force, we will write down sigma Fy is equal to 0 and our convention will be after the motion and positive. So let's start from this end. 5.75 kilonewton acting in upward direction. 5.75 kilonewtons acting in upward direction and then we have the 15 kilonewtons. And then we have this downward shear minus 3, and this will be equal to 0. So this completes the equation for shear force on portion BC. Now, if we simplify this equation, we will get V is equal to 15.75 minus 5x. This is the equation of shear force for portion BC. Now, in this equation, we have variable x. It means that we need to uh, calculate the values of shear force for point B and point C separately. So, if we calculate it for point B, x is equal to 5 meters. So, V at B is equal to 15.75 minus 5 into 
fine. All right. So the value of shear for point B from this side is minus 9.25. Minus 9.25 kilonewton. And for point C, x is equal to 10 meters. So VC will be equal to 15.75 minus 5 into 10. So if we calculate the value of shear for portion uh, for point C, we will get minus 34.25 kilonewton. So this way we have calculated the value of shear for portion uh, BC. And we have got it for both the points, point B and point C. Okay, now let's go ahead uh, and calculate the value of breaking moment for these points. In, for that, we take sigma mx equal to 0. And our convention will be we take clockwise as positive. All right, so let's write down the equation. Now, starting from this end, 5.75 kilonewtons in upward direction will produce clockwise movement about the section. Okay, so we we'll take 5.75 into x. All right, into x, and as it is producing movement in clockwise direction, so it will be taken as positive. And then this 80 kilonewtons. It is also acting in clockwise direction, so we take it as positive 80 kilonewton. Then what else? The 15 kilonewton force is producing counterclockwise movement about the point, uh, about the section, so it will be taken as negative 15. And how much is the lever arm for this section? Distance between this force, perpendicular distance between this force and section is x minus. X minus 5. And then this UDF, how much is the intensity of UDF? It is 5 kN meter and it will produce movement in counterclockwise direction. So this will be taken as negative minus 5 into. Now, how much is the distance of this UDL or the portion of the UDL present on the left side of the section? It is X minus 5. We have done this while calculating the shear pair minus the X minus 5. So this 5 into x minus 5 is the magnitude of the resultant. And what will be the location of the resultant? It will be acting somewhere over here. Okay. And how much is this distance? The distance between this resultant and the section. This distance is half of x minus 5. Because it is acting at the center of x minus 5. So how much will be the lever arm? It will be x minus 5 divided by 2 and then this minus m which is acting in a counterclockwise direction and this should be equal to 0. So in this way we have written the equation of moving for portion BC. Now if you simplify, now there are two options. You can either simplify this expression and get a simplified expression and then uh, calculate the movement for point B and point C, or even if, if you like, uh, you, cannot, you, you may not simplify it and then just plug in the values of x for point B and C and get the values of movement. So it is up to you, whatever you like. But I can tell you what will you get if you simplify this equation. If you simplify this, you will get m equal to minus. 2.5 x square plus 15.75 x plus 92.5. This is the equation that you will get if you simplify this expression. Now we can calculate the value of movement for point A and point uh, sorry point B and point C. So at A, sorry at B, not A, we are in portion BC, 
So at B, X is equal to 5 meters. So M at B will be equal to minus 2.5 into 5 square plus 15.75 into 5 plus 92.5. And if we solve this, we will get M is equal to 108.75 kilonewton meter. And this value of M is exactly equal to the value of M that we got from portion uh, AB. And we have discussed that whenever there is no point movement at any given point, then the values of movement that we get from either side of the, that point, that should be same. Okay, at point C, how much is the value of x? x is equal to 10 meters. So, mc minus 2.5, 10 square plus 15.75 into 10 plus 92.5. And if you solve this equation, you will get m equal to 0. Now, is it logical or not? This is logical because at point C, we have a roller support. And at roller support, we have discussed that if there is no point movement or external movement acting at external uh, heel support or roller support, the value of uh, bending moment should be equal to zero. So at point C, the value of bending moment is zero. And this is totally logical because this is a roller support. Whereas at point at support A, the value of bending moment is equal to the externally applied bending moment. It's equal to 80 kilonewton meter. So this completes our calculation of shear force and bending moment for portion uh, AB and portion BC. Now next step is to draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So, to draw shear force diagram and bending movement diagram, I will be considering the beam again. So, here we are. We have a simply supported beam. A point load is acting at the center. Magnitude of point root is 15 kN and there is a union. The intensity of union is 5 kN per meter. We have a point moving here with a magnitude of 80 kN. We have already calculated the reactions. Reactions reaction at support A is equal to how much it is 5.75 kN and reaction at support C support C in this point is point B the reaction at support C is equal to 34.25 kN stand length 5 meter and 5 meter. Okay, so this is the beam. Now, in order to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we need to draw some guidelines. We need a guideline at every location where we expect some variation in uh, shear force and bending moment. So we expect variation at the support. Uh, at all the points actually A, B, and C. Now let's see. So, this is our 0, 0 line. 0, 0 line, and we are plotting shear force diagram simply, and our units are kilonewton to draw this SFD. Now, 
if we look at the values of shear force, shear forces that we have already calculated, so for portion AB, for portion AB, the value of shear force is first. Where is that? The value of shear force is 5.75 kilonewton for portion AB. Okay, and this is positive. So let me draw a positive line. And the ordinate is 5.75 kilonewton. I don't need to write down the units because uh, we have written the units outside this that. So this is 5.75. And then what about the next portion? Portion BC. In portion BC, the value of shear force is the variable. At point B, it is minus 9.25 kilonewton, and at point C, it is minus 34.25 kilonewtons. So here we will have minus 9.25, 9.25 kilonewton, and at point C, it is minus 34.25 kilonewtons. Now the question is that how should we how should we divide this point with this point somewhere over here, which is 34.25 kilonewton. For this, we will have to look at the degree of the equation of shear force. So here is the equation of shear force for portion BC. The equation of shear force is 15.75 minus 5x. What is the degree of this equation? Degree of this equation is 1. What do we mean by degree of equation? By degree of equation, we mean the highest power of x involved in that equation. So in this case, we have only one, uh, like x is appearing in only one term, and the power of that x is 1. So the degree of this equation is 1, which means that uh, this line should be a first degree line. So from this point to this point, we will draw a linear line, first degree line. And this ordinate 35 is equal to the reaction presence here. So this will bring it to zero. So now we have the shear force diagram for this beam. This part, part AB is positive and this part is negative. Here we are. We have shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Sorry, we have shear force diagram and next step is to draw uh, the bending moment diagram. For bending moment diagram, let's draw the 0, 0 line, reference line. Zero and zero. This is BMD. And the units will be kilometer. Meter. Now at point A. If you look at the, the values of moments for portion AB, how much is the value of bending moment at point A? At the point A, it is equal to positive 80 kilonewton meter, and at point B, it is 108.75 kilonewton meter. So this is 80. Let's say this is 80, 80 kilonewton meter, and at point B, it is 108.75. All right. Now the question is, how should we find these two points? First degree line, second, third degree line. For that, we will have to look at the degree of governing equation. Here is the equation of bending moment for portion AB. 5.25x minus 80. What is the degree of this equation? Degree of this equation is 1 because the highest power of x appearing in this equation is 1. It means that these two points should be joined with a linear line. Here we are. So we have joined this 80 and 108.75 kilonewton meter with a zero degree line. Next, at point B, how many different values of moment do we have? We have only one value from portion AB. We got MB equal to 108.75 kilonewton meter, and from portion BC again MB is 108.75 kilonewton meter. So we have this one value for point C. What is the value of bending moment at point C? At point C, it is equal to zero. It 
means that the battery will die on when uh, it's connected here at the zero point. Now, the next question is that how should we join these two points? Should we join them with a first degree line or second degree or third degree one? Uh, for that, we will have to look at the uh, degree of bending moment uh, equation. And in this case, the degree of equation is 2. The highest power of x in this equation is 2. So the degree of this equation is 2. It means that these two points, this 108.75 and this u, should be joined together with a second degree line. So second degree line, the next question is that whether it should be convex up or concave up. For that, we will have to look at the magnitude of shear force diagram. If the magnitude of shear force diagram is increasing, then the slope of bending moment diagram should also be increasing. And if the magnitude of shear force diagram is decreasing, then the slope of bending moment diagram should also be decreasing. So from point B to point C, uh, whether the magnitude is increasing or decreasing, I'm talking about the absolute value, the magnitude. The magnitude of shear force is increasing. It means that the slope of bending moment diagram should also be increasing. And how we can draw such line? This is a second degree line whose slope is increasing from this point to this point. If you draw a line and uh, like tangent at this point and you look at the slope of that tangent uh, and you record that and then you draw a uh, tangent at this point and you uh, determine its slope, you will see that the slope is increasing from this point to this point. So this completes the bending moment diagram. The entire bending moment diagram of the beam is positive. Bending moment diagram is closing at this point. Value of bending moment is zero. This is a check. Bending moment diagram, uh, if it closes, then it means that this diagram, this diagram is correct. Last step is to draw the elastic curve. And uh, as the entire bending moment diagram is positive, then the elastic curve will be sagging throughout the length of the length. So here we are. This is the elastic curve of the beam. It is sagging throughout the length of the member. So this completes our discussion about this problem. We have drawn shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and elastic curve. So we will stop recording here. Thank you.